Hi guys, James from Meets here today and thank you for coming to watch. Um, I thought this particular video I could do in a little more of an informal style uh, just because um, I've got a really busy day. I'm actually filming two videos today and I've also got to make dinner for my in-laws and uh, all sorts of things like that. And the first thing I need to do is go to the gym because I have here in front of me to start the day, not just one steak, two steaks, but three and actually there's two in here so four. I'll be using one of these for the other video I'm filming but for this video I am going to be taking three of the steaks and deep frying them. For now I need to go to the gym because I don't know anymore if I'm eating steak to fuel my gym workouts or if I'm just going to the gym to burn off all the steak that I eat but I've had to uh, pick up my gym game a bit so I'll be going there and just before that, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to make myself an espresso and have a little think about how I'm going to film this video. So if you just come along with me, we'll get on with it. Actually smells really good. They say Swiss chocolate and vanilla orange creamsicle. Interesting description and description and creamy body. So, hmm, I definitely get chocolate and vanilla. I'm not so sure about orange creamsicle. Maybe I have uh, over extracted it a little bit. So here's the plan. I'm going to go off to the gym. In the meantime, I'm going to sous vide one of those three steaks. So. When you deep fry a steak, the point is to get it really crispy on the outside, get that beautiful crust, um, whilst not overcooking the middle because it's such a quick method of cooking. So what I want to see is um, how it affects a sous vide steak because sous vide steak often gets ruined at the last minute when you're trying to sear and brown and give that caramelization to the outside of the steak. On the barbecue, even though it's really hot, or on a pan inside if the weather's not so good. Um, I don't have a searzel, which is like a big sort of gas canister with a, a massive searing head. It's quite difficult to get that in the UK. Um, and I'm not a fan of any sort of gas flavor on my food, which I think you might get from those. So deep frying could be the way to go. It could be that you take it out of the sous vide and you just put it in for a minute. So we're gonna test that with um, uh, probably with the ribeye steak, we'll sous vide the ribeye and deep fry that. And I'll take half of the Denver steak, sous vide that and then deep fry that. And then we've got a sirloin, the other half of the ribeye and the other half of the Denver steak. We're going to deep fry them from scratch. And uh, let's see that how, how that goes. I'm going to go off to the gym. When I come back, I'm going to be really hungry and we'll get on with actually cooking the steaks. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this coffee, which is actually delicious. And uh, see you soon. All right guys, I'm back from the gym now and um, it was a good workout, it was intense. Uh, I'm currently working out for strength and power, so heavy exercises, um, not too many sets, intense, and a lot of sort of powerful movements. So it leaves me feeling pretty hungry and um, sort of, I find when I train like this that my body shape changes a bit, so uh, you know, you, your muscles get denser if that makes sense so um, it just means you're hungry a lot of the time <laughs> so I tend to find that I can't eat six times a day like the strong men or the bodybuilders would obviously that's not my job I couldn't take the time to do that and I'm, I'm not really interested in doing that so I tend to eat two or three times a day I have a decent breakfast and maybe a small lunch post-workout shake whatever and then a decent sized dinner I don't I don't count my macros I don't I don't really eat based on the fact that I want to look a certain way. I enjoy my food, obviously. Um, I try and stay healthy. So most of the meals we have in our house are cooked here. They're fresh, uh, you know, fish and fresh, lots of fresh vegetables, you know, just some rice. Um, we tend not to eat so many like fried things anymore. We used to 
So it's uh, going to be a little bit different to come home as I have just now from the gym and then eat deep fried steak. Deep fried steak. I mean, come on. It's one of the maddest concepts I've ever come across, frankly, but I'm really excited to try it. I think obviously it's going to be delicious. I mean, how can deep fried steak not be delicious? What I'm more interested to see is, uh, is it greasy? Does it just taste of the oil? And uh, I mean, I'm not sure it's actually going to help me in my working out. I mean, I know the strong men eat beef about five times a day and they eat 10,000 calories and I probably eat three and a half thousand calories. Um, I must say it was a long held dream of mine to be a strong man. Uh, but I only ever reached five foot nine. So whatever strength you have, it would be rather difficult to actually lift any of the implements that they do because I wouldn't be tall enough. Um, so I try and stay strong basically. And um, I'm still, at the age of 33, I feel like reaching my peak for strength. So I'm getting personal bests all the time at the moment. And uh, you know, it takes dedication, you're aching, your joints ache. So it's really important to get the right food in which is why I'm about to eat three deep fried steaks. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's look at the steak, shall we? All right, so we've got one steak here. This is a ribeye from the supermarket, British beef, 21 days aged. And then we've got this little piece of Denver steak. I actually think I'll have released a video about Denver steak just before this vlog comes out. So if you want to know what Denver steak is, you can go back and watch that now. Pause this one, open a new tab, go and have a look. It's a really interesting cut of steak. And then I've got an uncooked, so these two were sous vide, an uncooked piece of sirloin from the supermarket, British beef, 21 day aged. So I cooked these two sous vide ones at 124 degrees. So that would be really, really rare, really. Yeah, pretty rare. Um, because I don't know how the oil is going to interact with it, I wanted to make sure that they are on the less cooked side. You can always go more cooked, but you can't really bring it back. And then this one, what I'm going to do, just for this one, and half of, so I'm going to say half of the ribeye, half of the sirloin, deep fry half, and then pan cook the other half, as I might normally do, um, because that's going to show me what the difference is. And with this Denver steak, I actually need to take half of it and use half of it for the Denver steak video that I'm going to be making in an hour or two. Because it was difficult to get hold of a lot of Denver steak at that time like, that I wanted it. Um, you only get that sort of piece on, uh, uh, on the cow, like I think two of them. All right, so let's uh, get these out. So I freeze my steaks in the vacuum bag and then it's easy to just and I do them individually and then it's easy to sous vide it even straight from frozen. Uh, let me get some tongs. Yeah because I'm not always sure when I'm going to fancy a bit of steak uh, so keeping it frozen like that is ideal and then you can buy if you have the opportunity you can buy in bulk as well like from Costco or whatever. Um, Okay, this is the sous vide ribeye. I'll keep it on the other side of the board so it doesn't get confused. And you can always tell a bit of ribeye really compared to sirloin. You just get rid of this. Okay. And then we have this Denver steak, which is essentially part of the chuck. Part of the cut that's normally used just for roasting. But this is a little butcher's secret. Well, I'm giving the game away now. Go and watch that other video. Okay. So, we're going to take half of this and keep it for this video. I'm going to take this other half and put it to one side. Alright, I'm just going to take half of the sirloin. And we'll pan cook this part, we'll deep fry that part and let's do something similar over here. Okay. We're going to deep fry these three, pan cook these two. And as I said, I'm not going to season these two before I deep fry them. I'll season one and we'll see whether it should be seasoned before or after. 
All right, the boil is at temperature. I'm just waiting for my plancha grill pan uh, to get up to temperature. So next time you see me, we'll actually cook the steak. Okay, the, uh, the oil in the pan are nearly ready. One of the things you need to make sure when you deep fry steak is obviously that the steaks are really dry. You're going to get a lot of spluttering, but also whenever you cook a steak, it's best to make sure that they're dry. So if you've defrosted them, then you're going to need to pat them down, and if you've too beat them, you're going to need to give them a good dry. Um, it's just easy with a bit of kitchen paper. You're going to have to keep drying underneath them. It's a simple process, but just got to remember to do it in the first place. All right, that's done. It's not going to take long to deep fry, so we're going to do the pan cooked um, piece first. Let that rest while we're deep frying the other. Meat that's been sous vide doesn't generally need to be rested, um, at least not anywhere near it for as long as a normal, uh, normally cooked piece of steak. So when they come off, by the time it's on the plate and you're ready to eat, generally it's done. All right, guys, I'm absolutely starving now. It's been a good hour and a bit since I got home from the gym. I should have eaten by now. So let's get straight into it. This is the pan-fried supermarket sirloin that had not been sous vide at all. Uh, it doesn't look incredibly appetizing. Uh, I found with these supermarket ones, especially the cheaper ones, there's just not enough uh, fat there to sort of help it in its cooking to baste itself. So generally I would recommend that you put some sort of um, oil on there. So this is just to calibrate the palate. It's fine. It's not a steak I really love. Um, it's okay for a steak sandwich. Just your standard sort of nondescript sirloin steak, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the deep fried. So straight away I want to compare it with the deep fried sirloin that is exactly the same beef. Uh, it's cooked the same way. I, I put it in for two minutes just to get to the top end of um, what you should do and I wanted to see what would happen. It smells nice. It doesn't look particularly greasy. I mean there is a bit of fat sitting on it. Well, I mean Again, the actual beef itself is not interesting, it's not exciting, there's not much flavour, it's not fatty, it's not tender. But, already, it's elevated a really below average steak to something interesting and, and uh, really gives it a crispy outside. Hmm. Well, it's a promising start. It's done what I thought, obviously, which is give it you know, a crust, that's what we're after, a crust. Okay, let's do the ribeye equivalent. So this is again the supermarket ribeye, it's nothing particularly incredible. You see, I didn't want to use the best steaks first for this deep frying test, I wanted to see what it does to them. So, we can make a more formal video with some different cuts and thicknesses of steaks in future. So again, this is just pan fried ribeye. It's definitely nicer than the sirloin. Considering they cost a really similar amount for exactly the same um, sort of thing, they're both just British breed, 21 day age from the same supermarket. I would always go for the ribeye. It's just got that bit of extra fat, bit of extra flavor. It's definitely preferable to the sirloin. But now, this actually looks pretty appetizing, I've got to say. This is the same as this, deep fried, after being sous vide. I must say that's another difference between these two. This one was sous vide. That's really helped the texture. It's really um, juicy in relative terms. This one then had a minute. So it's uh, been sous vide for an hour and a half at 124 Fahrenheit and then got one minute in the deep fryer. Still pink all the way through. Smells good. Let's go for it. Mmm. Oh, 
Okay, that's really juicy. Um, what I would say is I'm reusing an oil that I used to cook scotch eggs last week. I don't mind reusing oil a few times, especially when it hasn't got to its burning point, so there's not been any smoke come off of that oil. It's um, canola or rapeseed oil, so it has a decent burning point, but it also does have a flavour, and especially when you've already deep fried it, and I can taste that flavour. So if you were doing this to serve to friends and, and other people, I would definitely use a fresh oil uh, to get a fresher flavour. Uh, but for the purpose of this test, it's really interesting. It's given it a really nice crust. Better than I would get in the pan, more uniform, and it's really juicy on the inside. The only thing I would say is I can feel the oiliness. Um, it's not an oiliness I'm worried about on the surface, but it does feel like the oil's almost penetrated into the beef and it sort of comes out. Okay, this is my first ever cut of Denver steak. I think this should probably be eaten rare to medium rare, and it is medium rare. Um, let's see what that's like. Okay, that's interesting to find out. It's medium rare. It's really nice and red in the middle, pink, and then crusted on the outside but actually slightly chewy. Now, it's got a nice flavor. It's somewhere between like hanger steak and chuck steak. You know, it's got that slight irony, strong beef flavor, which is, which is nice, it's tasty. But the texture obviously is nothing like ribeye. Um, Um, it's quite chewy actually and the oiliness is um, not the best. Let's compare it to the ribeye again. Mm. Well, I have to say actually I'm a little bit disappointed. First of all, this is not going to become my new post-workout food. Uh, it's messy. It's oily. It gives a flavour to the beef that you may not love. So it's that really viscous vegetable oil flavour. You have to be really careful about how long you cook it for. Um, and I think the result is not a resounding success in any way. I would say that I much prefer the barbecue flavour you get on the coal. I prefer the ease of pan frying. So, all in all for this first little experiment, I'm not sure I would ever do it again in vegetable oil. Um, which is a bit disappointing, I thought there was going to be something really interesting here. There would be two other things to test with deep fat frying. Different oils and beef fat itself. I imagine that would be pretty amazing. And uh, obviously using fresh oil as opposed to pre-used oil. Um, and then thicker cuts. I think this sirloin here, which is from the supermarket, is just way too thin to be deep fried. It's really overcooked. Um, you would never form a crust in time not to overcook it at this thickness. Uh, the ribeye worked okay. But ribeye is already fatty and I don't feel like I need that extra fattiness that I've got. Um, and then this cut of steak here which is new to me. No. I'm sorry. That's not pleasant at all. Yeah. Don't do your... Uh, your uh, hangers, your hanger the Denver Bavette steaks in here, they just, I feel like they don't have enough tenderness to cope with the really high heat and the, and the deep frying that you get. So personally, that's my opinion. Um, if you can be bothered to get your fat, deep fat fryer out or your pan with your oil, give it a go. I'm sure you're curious. I was so curious, so let down. 
I don't need to do that again. So uh, back to my uh, vegan protein shakes for my post-workouts from now on. Anyway, I hope you at least found this somewhat interesting. Um, I need to go and wash the flavour of oil out of my mouth. That is not what I was after. Oh dear. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, please give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.